Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. I recently built this drill storage and charging station and I made a couple of mistakes and learned a few things and in this video I'm going to share four tips with you that you can use in your own glue ups and builds. The first tip is this, masking tape. I have seen this a couple of times and I sort of discarded it as being too much of a hassle, too much of an effort to um, seal all the joints off with masking tape um, everywhere where there could be glue squeeze out. Um, this time I did it and I have to say I think it's really worth the effort because glue ups are usually stressful for me. It's sort of all comes together, you have to be really quick if you work on your own I always feel a sort of pressure to work against time and so I press everything together and I see clues squeeze out and then I try to get it away and stuff. It's stressful and the masking tape obviously catches the squeeze out or say 99% of it um, and if you see a big thread of clue running down somewhere on the masking tape you just okay no problem I'll, I don't have to deal with that. Um, because it will not stain my piece and I don't have to take it off immediately um, so it takes a bit of time in preparation um, while you apply all the masking tape but it sort of I thought I found it almost sort of calming me down and sort of making me think through stuff that that will be the next point um, and obviously you use up some masking tape so it takes up material it adds to the cost but I think it's actually worth it and I'm going to do it in the future um, so maybe that's something for you to consider um, then after gluing in things up I let the glue sort of cure for about half an hour um, until it doesn't run as as liquidly anymore and then I could just pull off the masking tape and I only had to remove a very few um, glue stains otherwise I was really happy with this method. The second point is this when I took this out of the clamps or already while clamping and checking for square um, I was a bit shocked because um, it doesn't seem to be square so on this side everything looks good but on this side well it doesn't and so I checked a couple of angles and it was a bit confusing because the, the angles seem fine sometimes but still at other places they're not so what I realized was that all these boards this one and this one are cupped if you look here you can see the spirit level rocking and here too so what I figured was um, I tried to really put pressure on here to get these gaps to close and of course that's a legitimate thing you want your gaps closed but I think this being only 15 millimeter material or 16 millimeter material I actually applied too much clamping pressure so by pressing on hard here these boards sort of cupped to the top because nothing was keeping them from it like the whole thing was basically too flimsy for these big clamps that I closed as hard as I could so I guess there is such a thing as too much clamping pressure um, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, maybe I should have added some some support here that kept the boards from cupping. Um, now they don't cup, they, they don't go back so it seems I have cupped them permanently. So it's not a big deal but um, yeah it's something that I hadn't thought of and Maybe it's a tip you can take away and use for your own projects next time. Tip number three. Um, I said before that sometimes I find glue up stressful. Um, and what I did this time and what I'm trying to do in general over the years is to think more and to do less. Um, and in this case, I really took the time. I made myself a cup of coffee and looked at the panels and I really thought through the glue up. I sort of visualized it in my head. I'm going to do this first, then I'm going to do this, then uh, where I'm going to put the clamp. Okay, I need this there. Um, I haven't done that earlier and sort of I always felt 
the, the, the urge to, to get on with the work, but over time I realized um, those 15 minutes of thinking and reflection um, actually improved the workflow so much and made me see potential critical points that other times just came up during the glue up and then adding to the stress. So maybe that's something you want to consider. Um, sort of add in a deliberate break of thinking before you glue up, um, it will probably improve the workflow. Last tip um, is about sanding. Um, I remember when I started out woodworking, I always wondered when, when and how to sand. And I've come up with a workflow that I think is really working well, and that's to sand with 120 grit before I assemble. So I sand with 120 um, when the panels are separate, because then they are very easy to sand, you get into every corner. Then I apply things like roundovers or chamfers, um, and that's the, the, the order of this, sanding first, then the chamfers, is because the 120 can really ruin a chamfer or ruin a roundover, because 120 is enough for most woods to actually change the shape of a, of a, a line very substantially if you don't pay attention. So 120, then the chamfers or the roundovers, then I assemble and then I go back with 180 or 240 to sort of apply the end finish and that's done on the surfaces that are actually accessible, that are touchable, so I don't have to sand the back panel with 180 or 240 because nobody's going to touch that anyway. That's I think a good workflow. So I hope you found these tips useful. Take care, enjoy your woodworking and I'll see you in the next video.